increasingly every year it is apparent that we as a society do not want Advent. We only want Christmas. We even want Christmas in July, as is increasingly popular. I have for all of you Advent candles, which you will happily be able to get for yourself after Mass today, so you can light Advent candles to remind you that we are in the season of Advent. Christmas is not here yet. Christmas is on Christmas Eve, December 24th. You are Christians. Christians believe in the season of Advent before there is Christmas. We are not celebrating Christmas, but we are celebrating Advent. And Advent is that great waiting room. When you are awaiting something. And the waiting room, and this the second Sunday of Advent, is presented to us as a wilderness. John the Baptist finding himself in the wilderness of the desert. And the wilderness, in all its harshness, is that place where God comes to give His people all that they need. The Bible proclaims, the hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all of our needs. But we don't want the wilderness. We don't like the desert. We only want Christmas. You can't have that in life. It don't work that way. You'll get in trouble if all you want in life is Christmas. You gotta want all the seasons of life. That's why the liturgical calendar of the church has many different seasons. Because it ain't just about Christmas. You gotta want and have Advent. That's why I got those Advent candles for you to remind you that we are in Advent. We don't want the wilderness, but we are in the wilderness right now as a world, as a people. The wilderness of the worldwide pandemic that we call the coronavirus. Personally, not just as a world or as a society, personally, you go through wilderness experiences as well. You go through desert experiences in your own life. You have advents as well. And you may be in the wilderness of having to usher a parent to their death or grieving the loss of a loved one after you've lost your husband or your wife. The pain is unbearable. You are in the wilderness personally, which is why there is so much depression, so much suicide around right now today in the midst of the wilderness that we are living in. So much loneliness. So much wilderness in facing a sickness or a disease or a cancer diagnosis, I want you to think about right now your own wilderness experience. Maybe the wilderness of
facing an estranged relationship with your loved ones, particularly during this holiday season where family members do not talk to one another. The wilderness of an addiction taking your life away or destroying your family. It's a wilderness out there, isn't it? When you have to go to a job that you hate or face a situation where you are ridiculed by your spouse or you have unbearable and ungrateful children or children that never call you, that don't really care, they've forgotten about you. It's a wilderness when the bills keep piling up and you feel overwhelmed. How many people find themselves daily living the wilderness of regret of what they did or could have done or didn't do? They beat themselves up about the decisions that they made in the past. How many people face the wilderness of feeling ugly or fat or unwanted or less than or worthless? Nobody's ever going to love me, people tell themselves. I will never find anyone. I'm useless. I have such a miserable life. It's a wilderness out there. You don't have to look to a pandemic to be in the wilderness. How many people are in the wilderness feeling like life is not worth living? Wilderness. You think John enjoyed it? You think he liked feasting on, as the Bible says, locusts and wild honey? You, you, know, you all know what locusts are? If you don't, Google it. It ain't anything good. <laughs> you think he liked it? I got another question in this Advent experience because, you know, before Christmas, I, I, I think that there was the Advent experience for uh, Mary and Joseph and Jesus. Didn't they go and not have a place to give birth? They had to give birth in a cave? In the midst of manure, there was no room for them in the inn. The pain of giving birth in a manger. So how did John go through it? How did Mary go through it? How did Joseph go through it? How was John able to go through this hellish wilderness experience? It's how you're going to get through yours as well. I'm, gonna, I'm giving you here some good pointers for your own life. So listen up. How did they get through it? That's how you're going to get through it too. That's why having faith is so important in our life in the midst of any pandemics or hellish or wilderness or or desert experiences when you have faith 
you are able to relax. See, I'm relaxed because I have faith. That's the definition of faith. You're able to relax because you know it all, it's all going to be fine. How did they get through it? How did John get through it? He was able to get through this hell his own personal hell and the hell around him because John knew what we have to internalize and that is that something great is coming. After all these labor pains, something bigger is coming. Something more wonderful is coming, which is what? Look at this Advent wreath right here which you haven't taken the time to do because you're so into the wilderness. You, 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 you've come and you haven't looked at it. What's in the middle here? That big white candle, which represents what? That Christmas is coming, but first you've got to go around it. Am I speaking to somebody here this morning or am I not? I mean, come on now. You've got to get through this whole circle here in order to get here. That's how John got through it, and that's how we get through our own wilderness experiences. You go through it, and it's coming. That's how you relax. That's what faith is about. And I know that I'm speaking to somebody this morning who's going through some wilderness experiences in your own life. After all these labor pains, something bigger is coming. Something more wonderful is coming. In other words, Christmas is coming. He focused on what was ahead and the promise of what would come after he got through the wilderness. Read that chapter 8 of the book of Romans, which I quoted in the beginning of Mass today, that we know, says Paul, that something greater is ahead after these labor pains. After the mother gives birth, she's got this. And all those labor pains were worth it. All your mamas out there, all you mamas, all y'all mamas out there, you didn't know that I was from the South. I am. I'm from the south. You didn't know that? I'm from the south of Poland. <laughs> okay? All you mamas out there, you know, pregnancy is not an easy thing. It's not easy to be pregnant. It's not easy to go through labor. I, well, I want to say I know. I don't know. I mean, I... I <laughs> all you... All you I, have, but you know, it's, I've heard, okay? <laughs> I've seen it. It's not easy. But the reward that comes once the baby comes at Christmas is worth it. Is it not? Look at your kids. It's worth it. Of all the pain, you know, they put you through, it's worth it. Your family members as well. It's worth it. So Christmas is coming. John focused on what was ahead and the promise of what would come after he got through the wilderness. You see, what was coming was worth the pain of the trip to get there. That's the biggest line I wrote. I really, I mean, after I wrote this, I said, whoa, okay. What was coming was worth the pain of the trip to get there. Wow, I think that's the quote of this, of this whole pandemic. Let me read that one more time, okay? I, it just hit me, and I wrote this, okay? The, what was coming was worth the pain of the trip to get there. My goodness. Focus on that in your own wilderness experiences. You know, I just got back from Poland, and I spent 
uh, all this time with my grandmother. And one of the stories, and she always tells me lots of stories, and I've heard this story before many, many times, but it always hits me every time I hear it, is that uh, my great-grandfather, her father, died during the Second World War from a lack of medicine. And her mother, my, grand, my, my great grandma, so my grandma's mom, she was left with her five children. And they couldn't prove, because they were all girls, they could not prove, prove that they were not Jewish during the Second World War. They couldn't prove it. If you had a male child, you could prove it. But they couldn't prove it. The father died, you know, because of they, you could prove it if you had a male by showing that you were not circumcised. Well, they couldn't prove it, and the municipal building was bombed, and everything burned, and they had no papers, so they couldn't prove it. So a notice came, and this was December of 1944. December of 1944, a notice came that you have, they were told, you have 30 days to provide us with papers that prove that you are Polish. They had 30 days. And if you don't prove that you are Polish, you're going to be put on a train to Auschwitz. Do you imagine going through all those days? They couldn't, they didn't. And on day 29, the Soviets came and liberated that area of Poland in January of 45. The labor pains. And so I asked her, well, how did you all get through this period? With their faith, every day, kneeling and praying and praying the rosary. And she says, my mother was calm the whole time. In other words, she was relaxed. One way or another. Can you imagine? Think it was easy? Twenty-nine days. That's where the second reading today makes more sense, doesn't it? God's time is not our time. But it's going to end. It will all be fine. One way or another, this whole thing is coming to an end. Whether it be this pandemic wilderness or your own personal wilderness, it will end. You have to hope and live with hope and live with your faith. The pain was worth it for John the Baptist. All those experiences made my grandmother the person that she is. I wouldn't be the priest I am today, the human being I am today, if it wasn't for her and her faith. I wouldn't be the person I am if it wasn't for my own wilderness experiences, many of which I share all the time with you. The wilderness is not a bad place. This whole experience is not bad. You think it is, but it isn't. Nothing that God permits is bad for us. Nothing. The pain was worth it for Mary. The pain was worth it for John the Baptist. The pain was worth it for my grandmother. Of all her experiences in her life. And the pain is worth it for you and for me. 
What doesn't kill us only makes us stronger. And you will be a stronger person after this. So relax. It will all be fine. Mm -mm. Focus on what's coming. And you know what? When you really know what's coming, the wilderness isn't such a bad place after all. Mm -hmm. When you really know what's coming. So do you? I'm asking you. One of the best experiences I've had as a priest over my now going on 11 years of being a priest was visiting a dying man who was on hospice who really knew what was coming. He was going through his advent. He had cancer terrible cancer. His name was David. Terrible. Terrible Advent experience for him. But he knew what was coming. And I remember visiting him and he was dying alone without his family. And I would go to see him every day. And I was finding myself not wanting to leave him at first I thought it was because I was afraid I wouldn't be there when he died and I wanted to be there because I got close to him. But then after standing for an hour in traffic, after spending an hour in traffic, I realized it was more than that. I did not want to leave the state of grace in that room with him. In that room in his house, the hospice room. A place where I had only one thing to do and no doubt was in my mind. There was no doubt in my mind that this was the one thing and the only thing worth doing when I was there in that room with him to sit there with him, to comfort him, to hold his hand, and to tell him that all would be okay, to read God's Word to him, the Bible, and to pray and to sing songs and to tell him jokes, of course, jokes, tell him jokes, and to tell him that he would get all the pizza and all the beer and all the ice cream he ever wanted in heaven, and he knew that that was the place he was going. You see, that was the only thing worth doing. That's why I didn't want to leave. It was a place where both of us, as chapter 8 of the book of Romans says, where both of us were in labor. Labor pains. And then one day, you know, during that whole experience, standing in line in a grocery store where shoppers were yelling at each other or into their cell phone, you know what that's like, or complaining about the checkout line being too long, like here in Safeway, you know, or somewhere else, it hit me. And I began to feel sorry for people who didn't have. I began to feel sorry for people who didn't have a hospice room to go back to. I felt sorry for all those people in the checkout line who didn't have a hospice room to go back to. I felt sorry for people who didn't have that wilderness experience. I felt sorry that they didn't have David who was dying to go and sit next to. All those people in the checkout line and all of us could all benefit from the experience of the labor pains, the wilderness. That's why you got to thank God for those wilderness experiences. 
were for hours in that hospice room in his house. It was just the sound of two people breathing, and that's all that mattered. It was a sanctuary, two people breathing. Where else could a person find time to notice that the morning sun was lemon-colored, as he would point out to me, David would, in the morning when he would wake up. He'd say, look, the sun is lemon-colored, and then he would fall asleep for a couple of hours, and I would sit there. And then when he would wake up and he would say, look, look, it's honey, honey-colored now in the afternoon. In what other place in the world did a sip of water make you feel so much better? I'm thinking of that place right now. In what other place would a sip of water make you feel so much better for hours after you struggled to sip on the straw in that cup that I handed to him? Or where else did a bath make all the difference in the world? Prepare the way of the Lord. A voice in the wilderness. A voice crying out in the desert. Prepare the way of the Lord. He's coming. A voice in the wilderness, in this coronavirus wilderness, your own wilderness. Often the last place you want to be, huh? but it's the best place to be. And if you know what's coming, that wilderness isn't such a bad place after all. Hmm? I knew where David was going. And I know where I'm going. Do you? In all its pain and struggle, the wilderness, it's the one place to find the real, the one place to find our new world, our new beginning. And after all, the one place to find Christmas, the birth of a child, birth, our birth. 